Well, if you've ever felt a little bit like a second fiddle, not the one that's getting all the attention, not the one in charge, well, then maybe St. Andrew's feast day is for you because he's the brother of Peter. And those of you who have siblings that maybe a, one, of his, one is a favorite and one is not, a recent episode of The Crown featuring Queen Elizabeth had her trying to figure out which of her children was her favorite kind of humors. But Peter and Andrew called together. Peter, as we know, gets to become the leader and the first pope. And in fact, of the four people that we hear that were called today, James and John are often mentioned together with Peter as Jesus's intimate circle of three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John. If I were Andrew, I'm sure that my ego would at some point have me asking, hey, what happened to me? Isn't it Peter, Andrew, James, and John? Wasn't that the way it happened? So it's apparently in God's kingdom, it's not all about the recognition. It's not all about who gets to sit closest, who's in the inner circle, the elite, as they sometimes call us here on the East Coast. Because Andrew, as an apostle, also was responsible for the building up of the church. Andrew was also martyred, as almost all the apostles. In fact, Andrew was crucified, and usually he's depicted in art forms, his crucifixion is depicted not in the same way of Jesus as like on a, a cross that's perpendicular, but on an, on an X. So it's the same like two pieces of wood, but instead it looks more like an X than a cross or a, or a T. So Andrew suffered and died for the kingdom, just like the guys who got all the credit, just like the guys who got to see Jesus transfigured on the top of that mountain, Peter, James, and John. Oh, no, Andrew. So sometimes maybe you and I don't feel like we're in the inner circle with God, right? Don't feel like we're right there, you know, God saying, hey, I want you right next to my side. Maybe God feels even farther away than he did Jesus felt to Andrew. But nonetheless, God loves us. Jesus loved Andrew. Nonetheless, God calls us to still follow him. That was the first motion. And then to be sent forth. So that right in the one sentence, he says, follow me, and then I'll make you the guys that are the fishers. So we're still called to do that, to follow in Jesus' footsteps, but also to be somehow out there hooking, fishing for others to come to God. Whether or not we get to sit in that chair close to him, or it feels like we're in the back of the room. Now, maybe we want to raise our hand and say, that's not fair. And maybe as he was being crucified, Andrew thought that, but you know what? I doubt it. I think he probably was thinking, would that I could do more to build up the kingdom. And I would go to my death again and again for my Lord Jesus, because he answered that call just like we have. And we're also now on the job of fishing for more. Yeah, it's a rainy day and we've got a pandemic going on, so that is responsible for a lot of the empty pews here. But we also know that our church could really stand more people believing in the sacraments, drawing close to our God. And that's not up to a billboard or a marketing campaign, that's up to us apostles, our feet who carry the good news as we heard. In the, in the first reading. So today, it may not be the day we get all the credit or get to become famous apostles, but it's still the day that we're called to follow Jesus and expand the kingdom in his name.